Hello, 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 it's Knits for Sanity and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for popping in. And if you're a regular visitor, thanks for coming back. I love having you. So here's the good news, bad news. The good news is this painting was approved for my August event that I will be participating in. The bad news is before I can kit it up, I need to de-kit <laughs> an old painting. So this ultimately in the end will be a whip and chat but kitting up variety. I am not going to make you suffer through me having to de-kit all of this lot. Um, this is obviously from a previous painting that has since been completed but I need to take care of this before I can start on my new kit. So what is the event you may be wondering? It is the Great Escape event hosted by Rebecca at Crafting and Crime Daily and Mickey at Mickey Sh Sunshine Creates. Of course, I will link to both of their channels in my notes for this video. And the hashtag for that is right here, Great Escape DP 2024. This is my third year participating and I believe it may be their third year hosting this event. So I will go ahead, I will de-kit, and then I will be back to chat with you and talk a little bit more about the event. Surprise! <laughs> so it's already kitted up. As it turns out, when I started de-kitting, um, that just takes a long time. And so by the time I started kitting up for this kit, dinner was being made and it was loud and crazy and so I decided that I just I had to get it done right so um I'm already kitted up and ready to go for the Great Escape Diamond Painting Event 2024. If you are still interested in joining there is still a little bit of time left I would definitely go check it out it's being hosted by Rebecca from Crafting and Crime Daily and Mickey over at Mickey Sunshine Creates and I will have all of that information linked obviously in my notes below, which I believe I've already mentioned, but still it's down there. Go look for it. Um, but yeah, so I am ready to go. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I cannot wait to begin. Oh, so pretty. It's just so pretty. And yeah, just again, this is what I'm doing. Um, if you are interested, the only things that you really need to know ahead of time is the type of canvas that you need to find. Go ahead, pull something out of your stash. It has to be a landscape painting, but like this, it, there's a landscape in here, but it's not like it's landscape, but not landscape and part of that's because it needs to include an animal and an animal needs to be the focus of that painting so I I kind of struggled this year a little bit with the you know the theme like what they wanted um but this was approved again you know obviously we have our bluebirds are like the main focus of here so that's our animal and then there is indeed a landscape going on in here as well so and minimum size is a 40 by 40 which is what my kit is so look through your stash and if you still want to join and you don't have something in your stash um be sure to fill out the google form now and then if you want to purchase a separate painting you may do that you may kit up at any time and put your kitted up project on the crafting and crime or crafting journey facebook page it's actually Crafting Journey Facebook page. Um, but definitely you're going to want to fill out that Google form, even if you don't yet have a painting in stock. So this will be starting for Thursday, August 1st. The event runs August through September. So you do have plenty of time if you decide that you still want to do it, but um, you have to get a different kit just make sure to get that Google form filled out by the first. Lucky for you, I just happen to have sitting around here. I got two more of the Maker Mark or Mark, no, Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is a whiskey, which, I mean, that's not bad either. Market 
make market. Is that what these are? I think it's make market is what these are called. Um, so I have two more of these to complete. And then that almost gets me done with all of my flowers for my mini diamond kit series where I've looked at flowers. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost there. So that's kind of exciting because then I'm going to finish up that series and be done with it, which will be nice because it ended up being, it ended up being a, a full blown series that I had not anticipated it being a full blown series. So it'll just feel good to have that one done and give my final thoughts and opinions on it. And, you know, people keep mentioning other mini paint kits available, which I do appreciate. Um, it's really finances that just prohibit me from being able to pursue all of the different things out there. Um, so I think after I get done with the flower kits that I have right now. I'm just going to be done with the mini painting kit series at this point in time. It just, I would love to try everything out and give you guys a full review of absolutely everything and show you the differences between them, some of the similarities. But like I said, I mean, just financially, that's just not a viable option for me. Uh, sort of speaking, of which, kind of, <laughs> I mentioned last week in my little face-to-face -face update video, but you know, thank you to those of you who left positive comments about, oh, thank you so much for showing your face, or those of you who pointed out, um, you just did a whole hour-long video of just your face. You are absolutely correct. I did. I did that only not even a month ago, but <laughs> uh, it was just kind of ironic that Almost as soon as that video came out where I do talk to the camera for a full hour, I got like several comments on other videos saying, you know, you got to show your face. And so it was just kind of weird because I got I got these comments and I'm thinking, but I, I did just show my face. Well, whatever. I'll I'll do another short little update video letting, <laughs> showing my face again. So thank you to those of you that offered your support for that. Um, I think I'm avoiding the real, <laughs> the real thing that I'm supposed to be bringing up with you. So talking with another YouTubing friend of mine at my retreat last month, she really reminded me I need to be promoting myself a little bit more than what I do just by reminding all of you to please support the channel, uh, free ways that you can do that, that are like of really no consequence to you is just liking and subscribing. So if you haven't already done so, please consider liking and subscribing my channel and liking this video and leaving positive comments. Uh, and super thanks is also another option. So if you really like the content, you like what I'm giving you, offering you, and you want to support me that way too, and being able to you know, get more kits and such, you can always just leave a super thanks as well, which is just a one-time payment. Um, obviously, YouTube does get a, a portion of that, but um, that would still be definitely appreciated and would be used for the channel. So, and yeah, just, you know, a few bucks if you want would be phenomenal. All right, so now I got that kind of nasty part out of the way. And it really shouldn't be because I do work very hard at this. And I am, I mean, you know, I am always very creatively thinking ahead and planning and figuring out what it is that I want to do next on here and trying to develop, I don't want to say like good content because obviously what I'm creating is not like Emmy worthy <laughs> content by any stretch, but informative. You know, I want, I want to keep it informative for you. I want to try and keep this, um, something that you can apply to your crafting experiences and hopefully also help you smile by sharing my stories and stuff. Oh, I got a 
drill there. Look at that. Okay. Um, so yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, who's watching the Olympics? I am obsessed. So this is the first year in 20 years that I have had access to all of the Olympics. And it has been wonderful. I have absolutely loved it. If you are unfamiliar with me and my situation, if you will, we live kind of in the middle of nowhere. We have never had actual television. Uh, it's just, it's an expense that we've never been able to afford. And then with where we live, it has to be satellite, which is ridiculously expensive and uh, goes out all the time too, particularly out here. So we have never, we've never had like normal TV. It's only been in the most recent of years that we have been able to adequately stream anything as well. And so this is the first year that thanks to Peacock, I got a subscription. I said, I was going to say prescription, but no, I got a subscription. Although I think my daughter might say it might be a prescription <laughs> because I originally got the prescription to watch the U.S. finals for wrestling. And then I went ahead and I just kept that active so that we could watch the Olympics. But um, I grew up watching the Olympics as a kid. I mean, it was such an anticipated event for me. Part of that may also be too, we didn't, we only had like limited TV when I was little. We had like the most basic cable package. Like 10 channels, I think. 10 to 12 total channels is what we had growing up. So you had your major networks and then a couple of bonuses. But really the only bonus bonus that I remember is TBS. We always had TBS, which is good because I was obsessed with watching old television shows. And I still, I mean, I love classic TV and it's because we had TBS growing up. And so I could watch The Brady Bunch and I Dream of Jeannie and Bewitched and Happy Days and Gilligan's Island all on TBS. So that I think might be part of it is it was different television from the norm <laughs> back in the day for me. Um, and it's, it's just... It's just, it's a neat concept. Obviously, things have plagued the Olympics several times over, over its over 100 year course history now. But for the most part, I do like what it stands for symbolically and this coming together of nations with varying backgrounds to partake in something that is supposed to be fun. And I, you know, I like to believe that for the most part, this has remained true, despite, like I said, despite some of the problems that have happened over the years. Um, I do. I, I like to just look at it from a, a pretty much wholly positive viewpoint. Wrestling has not started, in case you're wondering. Uh, wrestling begins on Monday, August 5th, which also happens to be my son's ninth birthday. But I have been really into men's gymnastics because I follow a couple of people. I want to call them kids, but in this case, they are actually young adult men, like from the Stanford team. Um, and they have really good social media. A lot of those guys from the Stanford team do. And... Um, the U of M guys too, actually, a couple of them have a pretty good social media presence. So I've been following them for like the past year and a half. And I've learned a lot more about men's gymnastics. Because of course, growing up, 
my mom was really into women's gymnastics. And as a country, we just are. We're really, really, really into women's gymnastics and kind of always have been. Men's gymnastics is kind of seen as other. <laughs> and I think it's just <sighs> misperceptions. Is that a word? Misperceptions? I don't misconceptions is the word that I think I'm actually thinking of. It's misconceptions. Misconceptions about what it means to be masculine, what it means to be involved in a manly sport. I, you know, I, I kind of blame it on that and this idea that somehow football is really manly and masculine and rough and tough, but men's gymnastics is not. I, I mean, I don't know if you have watched men's gymnastics, you would agree with me that talk about the height of physical fitness and male physique gymnasts um, and probably wrestlers, but gymnasts are, I mean, Jeez Louise, it's they, incredible. Just incredible. So, and of course, um, women's gymnastics is still really awesome too, um, obviously. But just, I've been especially into men's gymnastics this year. Just knowing that much more about the sport has really, really helped. And I mean, I've watched a little bit of everything. I saw some of the skateboarding. My... <laughs> My youngest daughter watched fencing and watched us take gold in women's fencing. Go for it, you're crazy, right? And then it turns out that she's a medical student. She's about ready to graduate from med school. Oh, uh, I mean, okay. I will say the one downside of the Olympics is it kind of makes you feel really bad about your own life. You start to kind of question your existence. And why am I here? I have done nothing nearly this incredible or great. <laughs> I am a lousy human being compared to the Olympia Olympians. Um, but in all sincerity, it is really, really impressive. And I am, I'm pretty excited about the Olympics. Um, you know what? You guys won't know this, but I'm going to go use the bathroom and I'll be right back. I have returned. It's one thing about, you know, more, more middle-aged woes. But when you got to pee... You gotta pee. Just, you know, don't, don't ignore nature's call. <laughs> oh, um, so my son, like I said, his birthday is Monday, August 5th. He's going to be nine. I can't believe it. my baby's going to be nine years old. Oh, and he is so excited about his birthday. Oh, wow, is he excited about his birthday, which is good. It's really cute. I love, I love still having a kid little enough that he is that excited about his birthday and like, it's a magical day for him. And uh, today he's actually with his grandfather going to a museum and watching a planetarium, planetarium show which he's also been obviously super geeked for and uber excited. <laughs> he's, he's a funny kid. He is a very funny kid. So I'm taking him down to meet up with his grandfather. And <laughs> he starts telling me about some Minecraft book that he's reading and he was sharing with me how it's really cool because the chapter titles are actually life lessons apparently and that he just thinks that's really neat because kids need to learn some of these life lessons because they're really important and kids really like Minecraft so sneaking them in with Minecraft book was a really smart idea and he says, in some of these life lessons, I already know. For example, be happy with what you have. He's like, I already know that life lesson. I am really happy with what I have, you know? In this country, we have, we have so many things that a lot of other countries don't have. 
And yeah, I, I agree with him. And he says, yeah, like, we have post-it notes. Yes. Yes. I have never considered post-it notes to be of such high value for human society that this would be considered one of the amazing things of living in a first world nation is access to post-it notes. But I guess, yeah, um, yeah, I, sure, post-it notes. So the next time you use a post-it note, just be really thankful that you have that post-it note. <laughs> Oh, he, I don't know. He's either, he's either a genius or he's just really strange. It could be both, probably both. He had to get a new backpack this year, but I don't know if you've ever seen the show, The Middle. Love that show. But the youngest brick in that television show, he had this backpack and it was, I'm trying, it seems like it was like a um, basketball player like uh I think it was Shaquille O'Neal actually was his original backpack and he didn't want to get rid of it because his backpack was like his friend you know but he didn't know anything about basketball he didn't know anything about Shaquille O'Neal but he he loved his backpack he didn't want to lose that well my son has had the same backpack since kindergarten he's going to be third grade this year and his backpack is Lego Ninjago, which he has never been into. I mean, he likes Legos, but he has never, ever, ever been into Lego Ninjago at all. So when I mentioned last year that it's, you know, we're going to have to get you a new backpack for next year, definitely. He was really apprehensive about it, but I, I like my back. It's been with me since kindergarten. I don't, I don't want to have to get a new backpack. Um, son, you need a new backpack. Okay, straps are falling off. The zipper isn't working. You need a new backpack. But this one's been with me the whole time. I understand. But it's time to replace it. Change is good. <laughs> so he now has a new backpack. Fortunately, he stayed in the same color family, which is also very, very weird it's a it's a completely red backpack he doesn't like red he likes blue but because his original backpack was red lego ninjago i think transitioning to an all red backpack was slightly easier for him i guess it reminds him enough of his original backpack i don't know i don't know he <laughs> As you know, if you recall, he also made a dance team for this coming year. And he is very excited about that. And he's taken on a new air of dance confidence, if you will. We were watching, I don't even remember what we were watching, but we were watching something on Netflix or YouTube. Really, he was watching it and I was just with him. But it was some guy dancing and my son says well you aren't going to get a high score doing the same moves like that you can't just keep doing the same moves over and over do you think I got high gold because I repeated the same moves oh boy so he is definitely taking on a new air of confidence with dance which is good I you know for all my kids I just want them to do what they love and he really loves dance. So, and clearly we are learning some things. <laughs> I, he loves dance. To say that he's good at dance would probably be a bit, a bit of an exaggeration. But he does love it. So, just like my kids with all things sports related. They're not really natural athletes. But they do what they love. And for me, that's everything. That's everything. I will be there and I will be cheering and praising my kids upside and downside. Just knowing they're out there doing it. So same with my son and his dance.
but he does know to not repeat the same move because that is not going to give you a lot of points in a dance competition. Um, so if you did catch my little update last week and I talked about work and how work has just been really, really stressful. It has been. It's, and it's been very emotionally draining. And when I am going through emotionally draining things, it makes doing my channel really difficult. I love, I love doing my channel. I love, I love being with you guys. I love spending this time with you. Um, I, I think you know what I mean by that. Obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm not really, I mean, I sort of am, am spending time with you, but never mind. You should, you know what I mean. But I, I do, I thoroughly love my channel. Uh, but when I am just really emotionally stressed out to the max, I don't have the creative energy for my channel. I just, I don't have it. I am spent. I am drained. And that's what it's been the last couple of weeks. Even today, sitting down to do this whip and chat was hard because my brain is just so consumed with all this other stuff going on with my people. And yeah, it is hard. I, I have, you know, one person that it's been an ongoing nightmare trying to secure certain benefits since the end of March. And now here we are at the very end of July. Um, I have another person whose needs are very significant and watching their family put in so much love and time for their care is, I mean, it's admirable, but it's also heart wrenching. Um, I had another former client of mine and I actually had kind of briefly posted about this on social media. She had contacted me out of the blue. She hadn't been in my caseload for six months. And all of a sudden I heard from her from out of the blue and I thought that's kind of weird, but I took the time to respond and asked how she was doing. And she said, well, not great. I'm waiting for surgery again. And I said, you know, I am so, so sorry. What are they doing? So she told me what it was that they were supposed to be doing for surgery. And I let her know that I was thinking of her and to let me know how things went when she was done and recovered. And a few days later, I thought, huh, I haven't heard from her. I'm going to should check up on her and that's when I learned that actually she had died she never woke up from surgery and I was one of the absolute last people she had contact with before she went under and never came back um I mean I did not know her well and she hadn't been on my caseload for a long time well half a year but um stuff like that it just makes you wonder you know did did I do enough I hope I did enough why did she why did she decide to contact me of all people I she was only on my caseload for a couple of months um yeah you just lots of different thoughts go racing through your head and yeah I don't know so it's just been it's just been very emotionally tolling plus other normal aspects of work, if you will, <laughs> you know, that situation where you can only get your job done if you have these other people getting their jobs done. And when they're not getting their job done, then you can't get your job done. I have a lot of that going on as well. I consider that more normal, normal work stuff, but it is frustrating because then I feel like I waste so much time. I feel like I waste a lot of time reminding other people, I need you to do this, this, and this. And then I also feel terrible reminding other people, I need you to do this, this, and this. You know, I hate nagging. Um, Cause that's, I mean, that's not what I want to do. Uh, and I 
and I end up spending a lot of time having to apologize to other people. <laughs> like, yeah, so this will be done really, really soon. Um, you know, sorry, sorry for the delay. <laughs> I just, I hate, uh, some of it is my control freak nature, you know, where I just wish if I could just do it all, but obviously that's not really an answer or solution either, but just that's normal work frustrations for me, but it is frustrating. And like I said, it does take up a lot of time and it does take up a lot of mental energy. And then it's, um, I don't know, the finances are difficult. You guys know that. It's like a start of the new school year coming and the expenses for children are unbelievable. You know, I have one who just finished driver's ed, woohoo! But it's like a thousand dollars. It's a good thousand bucks to get your kid licensed now in the state of Michigan. <sighs> That's a huge fee. And then when I'm gonna have to pay that, again next year and the year after that or probably actually two years after that um then not including your car insurance what happens to that when you consider the cost of all of your school supplies that you need to get for everyone and then when you consider the cost of getting your kids signed up for athletics because schools always have like a pay to play fee so that's you know a few hundred dollars there a few hundred dollars for shoes so they can run um school supplies I still need to get graphing calculators last year I was able to get away with not actually having to purchase them but this year there is there's no getting around it anymore I have two that will be in advanced algebra and will absolutely need graphing calculators and then I have one who will be in geometry and there's a very good chance that her school, because she's the one going to the new private school, her school may just insist on her having a graphing calculator now as well. <sighs> but look how pretty this is. That's done. Uh, isn't that, that's so pretty. Okay. So that one's finished. All right. <laughs> on to the next one, at least for a little while. I'll get it started with you guys. So it's just, oh, it's just overwhelming. Isn't it just, oh, it's just so overwhelming. And I think back to when... I was a kid and I know, I know there were definitely still big expenses when I was a child too, but not, not like what I have today with my children. I, not at all. <laughs> and gas, I talked about that last time, I think gas, realizing how much we spend on gas every month. It's like, oh, this is why we're broke. <sighs> and then, you know, add to that having a car that continues to just be a nightmare and a headache blah 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 all right you don't need to hear any more about that and the complaining we're done um <laughs> yes we are done back on to happier things like the olympics so wrestling i do encourage all of you to take a little bit of time and watch some of the olympic wrestling why because it's actually a really 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 good sport my daughter is super geeked. Her, you know, number one university team has five alumni competing in the Olympics, which is a record for any school, excuse me, for any school program ever to have five athletes in the same Olympics from the same college program. Uh, four of which still are part of the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club. And I mentioned this last time too, but she did a little video about it. Just it's a it's a little short. So if you want to go back and watch her little short on it, she will fill you all in. And we'll see what she decides to do. I don't know if she's thinking she's gonna give updates during the Olympics or not. She's a little, I think she's a little torn because like Michigan is her school, but she adores women's wrestling. And of course, Michigan does not have a women's wrestling program yet, as she likes to point out yet. Um, so I think she's a little bit torn. Like she wants to give Olympic updates, but she's only ever done Michigan minutes is what she calls them. 
So it's only ever been updates about Michigan athletes, Michigan wrestlers. But she loves women's wrestling. And so I think she's kind of like, so what, what, what do I do? I can't call it a Michigan Minute anymore. And because of how she is and with her thinking, I can see that being problematic for her. Like, but then it's not a Michigan Minute. If I talk about the women, it's not a Michigan Minute. Oh, I'll point out some things like Sarah Hildebrandt has done the women's camp, the girls wrestling camp at U of M a couple of different times. So that's a Michigan connection. I'll, I'll point that out. So she could still, you know, I can, I can come up with some justifications for it yet. I just put this one back, but I need the P in here. Don't you hate it when you do that? <sighs> um, tomorrow. So today my son is with his grandfather to, what am I doing? I'm doing P, 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 um, to go to the museum. And tomorrow my girls are going to the museum with their grandfather and for a planetarium show. He originally asked about doing two and two and I encouraged him to take my son separately. He is so used to his sisters and being the youngest of them and they are all much closer in age and so I strongly encouraged that no I think you should just take have luck for this trip and I hope it's going well I hope that they're having fun I hope my son is not making his grandfather's ears bleed from his constant talking I feel like that might be really all that I have energy for today I'm not sure how long of a whip and chat this is actually going to end up being because it has been you know I've had to stop it a couple of times um but yeah I'm just I'm feeling like I might have to be done like I just I have like I said when I am this emotionally drained in other parts of my life it makes my channel hard to do I say that but I still have ideas and there's still stuff that I'm really excited to do with you guys um there are so many things I want to complete and get done. <sighs> Just bear with me and, and, you know, thank you for your patience. Especially those of you that watch my whip and chats, you tend to have a much better insight into what's been going on around here. And so I really, really appreciate you a lot. And your kind words are huge. And ugh, there's something about social media and obviously, <laughs> this has been widely discussed, but the way that people feel so comfortable saying things over social media that most people would never say in person just blows my mind. I, <laughs> I have had some of the nastiest comments good grief and it, it's I don't I don't get it I, you just kind of want to be like why why do you feel the need to go out of your way to say something mean to somebody I don't understand um I'm getting pretty good about not taking it personally sometimes I leave the comment up because other people will reply or sometimes I will reply and I try to be really considerate, you know, and, and take what the person is saying very genuinely, you know, believing they, they must have a real reason for saying this beyond just wanting to be mean. I, <laughs> you know, so I, I try to address some specific issues and things like that. Um, but I've also learned to... Sometimes it's okay to delete comments. I leave them up for a few days because I, I'm not sure why. I guess I just feel like everyone is entitled to their voice and their opinion, right? Even if I don't really understand why you needed to go out of your way to leave that opinion. But I guess, yeah, you know, it's like everyone's entitled to that. So I leave it up for a few days and... I have since deleted just a few, a few of the particularly harsh and pointless 
pointless comments. Like if you have a like a legitimate critique, that's one thing. Um, and mean about it, genuine critique and you're mean. I mean, that's one thing. At least you actually have substance. But if it's just to be mean, I I guess I guess sometimes it's okay to just say no. And I'm sure now I'm going to get comments from people about how that's absolutely abhorrible and um you shouldn't do that at all either and how dare you delete comments seriously it's been like maybe I don't know probably less than 10 over the entire life of my channel which is two years old by the way two years I've been doing this for two years that also is mind-boggling to me and I've enjoyed it for two years, which is also really, really cool. Actually, I've been thinking about that. And I think in a future whip and chat, if you're still with me, um, definitely let me know if this is something that would be of interest to you. Uh, talking about being a YouTuber, some of the things that I have learned, and I'm talking, you know, being a, a, a small time YouTube channel. Uh, just some, I don't want to say necessarily advice, but yeah, just different things that I have learned, different observations that I have had in this journey. So if you have a newer YouTube channel, if you're considering doing a YouTube channel, just information that I think might be good for you to know and might be helpful for you. So if that's something that interests you for a future whip and chat, let me know, please, because I, I've i been thinking about it, but then it comes back to, yeah, but would anyone find that of interest? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, but I'm just, in general, I'm filled with a lot of self-doubt these days. It's, it is, it's that, it's that emotional energy thing. Um, so yeah, but that's something that I've been thinking about. Nothing, nothing major. I don't hold any secrets or keys to the kingdom, obviously, because I am a very small time YouTube channel. And some of that, I guess, is by choice. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't ever want anything to be big and feel like you lose control over it. That's also part of the reason why I am not an affiliate with anyone. I will do PR packages. You know, if someone reaches out and asks me, you know, hey, if I send you this, would you be willing to unbox it or show it on your channel? I always reply with, yes, I will, but I will leave an honest review. So if I don't like it, I will let people know. If I point out critiques it's because they are legitimate critiques with your item and for the most part companies have been really cool with that I did have one company get really upset with me <laughs> one time because I was honest oh uh, like well too bad I told you I was going to be honest and you said yeah that's fine but in the end they didn't really want me to be honest and asked me to change what I had said and I said that's not going to happen um, but yeah, that's part of the reason why I have stayed unaffiliated is just to have that additional control. I don't want to feel like someone else is running my channel. You know, I don't want to feel beholden to a company that I may end up not actually really caring for them, whether it's their product or business ethics. Um, you know, I want to have... I want to be able to just be honest. That's, I guess that's what it boils down to. I just want to be able to be honest on here and let you guys know, like, hey, no, this is, this is kind of lousy or actually this is a really good item. Yeah, I want to be able to be honest with you guys. I don't, I don't want you wasting money <laughs> and time on crap, right? Like, I want to be able to let you know. So, 
that was kind of a weird tangent. Like I said, this whole lack of emotional energy thing, <laughs> it does some weird, weird stuff with my train of thought and my sleep or lack of sleep. Yeah, I'm not sleeping worth 10 cents lately. Well, maybe worth 10 cents, but definitely not a full quarter. Um, Just, uh, yeah. Can you relate? Please tell me. Please tell me you understand where I'm coming from here and that I am not completely crazy and losing my mind. This is just pretty, hopefully, standard. I am spent. I got nothing left. I'm feeling immensely drained. Yeah. I really like these little flowers. Look, I'm hopping around again. Okay. It's, it's clearly, it is clearly time, time to be done. I think I have all this letter done. What am I doing? I'm doing O. Let's double check. Do I have all the O's done? So, and yep, I only see green ends. So I think we're done with that color. So yeah, it's a good time to stop. And yeah, I'm really excited to get this series done and out of the way. Um, I'm excited to start my event in August. And I don't, I really only do two other events every year. I'm not a big event person, mostly because I just, I don't have time. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't have the time to be hyper involved in events. And I'm not, this is going to sound weird, but I'm not part of like the in crowd, if you will, within the diamond painting community. You know, I just, I do me. <laughs> I do me and I've made friends, which was my whole goal for starting my channel. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really just down to two events that I do every year. And the one is this one, the Great Escape event. It's just, it's a fun event. I like the women who host it. Obviously, Rebecca with Crafting and Cream Daily. She's one of the couple few channels that I religiously follow. She's just, she's great at recapping live trials. So go check her out. Mickey is such a lively and lovely personality um she's just fun and her laugh oh her laugh it's worth sitting in alive just to hear her laugh but they host this event I think this is their third year and it's my third year participating uh that one's fun and then of course I do Liz Harrison's 30 by 40 event too every year which I don't know when it's going to be next year because it's been different months <laughs> So we'll see what it is this coming year. And then, of course, I started my very first event for June, which is the Easy Breezy Summer Kickoff event. And that was a lot of fun. And I really think, I think I want to continue doing it. Um, and I've had good reception. It seems to be a pretty well-liked event. So I think, I think that's something that I may continue doing for next year. Uh, I see I'm still talking. This is, oh, my word, guys. Are you still here? Are you still listening? Um, <laughs> this was supposed to be done 15 minutes ago. It's the Midwest goodbye. Have you heard of the Midwest goodbye? It goes like this. Well, it's time for me to head out. Or, oh, I guess I should be uh, starting to pack up. You know, you say something like that, okay? Usually it does involve a knee slap. That is no exaggeration. If you've seen any of those TikToks or anything like that, it is no exaggeration. That is exactly what happens. And you start to like meander over to the door. You'll grab your coat, but you're just holding on to it. You don't put it on yet. You put on your shoes or your boots and you stand at the door and you talk for like another 30 minutes. Then you put your coat on and you open the door and you stand on the landing and talk for like another 10 minutes. And eventually, eventually everybody does say goodbye. And you, you leave and you go home or you go back inside. Um, that's exactly what has happened here. It is the Midwest goodbye. That, that is how it works. And the funny part is it is completely normal and natural for those of us who live in the Midwest. And, and I'm hoping other parts of the country as well. Like you guys do this on the East and West Coast too, right? Like it isn't just unique for the middle of the country. Please tell me that that is the case. All right. I thought of more stuff I could tell you about, but it is really, truly time to be done. Thank you so much for joining me and putting up with me today. Um, 
you guys are definitely appreciated. You are always welcome. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Notes for everything I've talked about will be included below for like the Great Escape event. I will try and include a link to this, uh, not Maker's Mark, but Make Market on Michael's. You can buy this online. Um, otherwise, it's just available at Michael's stores. But I've talked about that in the past. Um, yeah, I, oh man, I've thought of other things that I meant to tell you about and I just didn't. So that's just gonna have to wait. Okay guys, so like I always say, please practice kindness. Um, a little bit of extra patience and kindness will go a really, really long way with those around you in your day-to-day -day life. And I hope that you are showing that same level of patience and kindness as well. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you again real soon.